Hello, in this video what we are going to do is we are going to discuss what uh, can you do if you have more than one capacitor connected to the same battery. So we will have some capacitors that are connected in series and some capacitors that are connected in parallel. So how can you analyze these simple circuits? And we are going to start with capacitors that are connected in series as seen in this circuit. So what I have in the circuit is a battery three capacitors that are connected one after another and these points A, B, C, D are simple points for me to use to describe what happens in this circuit. So my goal here is to simplify this circuit and instead of having three capacitors here to have just one as seen here and this is going to be the equivalent capacitance of these three capacitors. So how can I go from here to here? And to understand that, I guess what we need to do is we need to understand what happens when these guys are fully charged. Now, the moment you connect this circuit, as we discussed before, this terminal of the battery will be at a higher potential than this uh, capacitor plate. So there will be a flow of charges between these two. And this plate will be positively charged. As it is positively charged, though, it will attract the negatively charged electrons to this side of the capacitor. Now if you pay attention, this portion of the circuit is actually electrically isolated from the rest of the circuit because there is nothing here. Remember these are not connected and these are not connected. So this was initially neutral, which means if you have negative charges here, since it was initially neutral, you are going to have positive charges here. And the same thing will happen on this portion of the circuit. So these positive charges will attract the negative charges here. You will have positive charges, negative charges and so on and so forth. And this will continue until all the capacitors are fully charged. Let's say when this first capacitor is fully charged, it has positive Q on the left plate and negative Q on the right plate. If this is negative Q, remember this portion of the circuit was neutral. So this plate must have positive Q here and negative Q here, positive Q here and negative Q here. Some of you might ask, why do I have minus Q here? Okay, I got this positive Q here because this will increase until this plate reaches the same potential as this battery terminal. What about the negative plate? Why does it have to have a charge with the same magnitude as the positive plate? And the reason for that is if the charge on this plate is larger than the charge on this plate, it means that the electric field created by this guy is larger than the electric field created by this guy. So on the right side of this, you will still have some net electric field, which will still continue to pull the electrons here and this will continue until this plate reaches the same charge as the positive plate in magnitude. Now without doing anything further here we have already got an important piece of information about uh, capacitors that are connected in series. Apparently they are going to have the same charge on them. But what does this mean for our equivalent capacitor here? Well obviously since this plate is connected to the positive terminal of the battery, it will have the positive charge on this side and the negative charge on this side. And if you look at here, the plate that is connected to the positive terminal of the battery has Q on it. So we are going to have Q here and the plate that is connected to the negative terminal of the battery has minus Q on it. So this equivalent capacitor apparently will have the same charge as these capacitors. Good. Now, how can we determine the equivalent capacitance? And for that, what we need to do is we are going to have to take a look at the voltage across these capacitors. Now, the voltage across C1, let's call that V1 here, where V1 is actually equal to the potential here, VA, minus the potential here. Remember, these are conductors and along this conductor, electric potential is constant. So we're going to have Va minus Vb. Let's call the voltage across C2 V2. Then V2 will be equal to Vb, right? This potential on this plate 
minus the potential on the negative plate and let's call this v3 which is going to be vc vc minus vd and we know that va minus vd is actually equal to the voltage across our battery right so if we add if we add all these guys together what we are going to get is VA minus VB plus VB, so these guys cancel out. Minus VC plus VC, these guys will also cancel out. And we are going to end up with V1 plus V2 plus V3 is equal to VA minus VD, which is, by the way, the voltage across the battery. So we reached at another piece of information here, which is saying that when these capacitors are connected in series, they are going to share the voltage of this battery here. And how will they share them? We will see that in a moment. Okay, now let's continue. Now, what is V1? You guys remember the capacitor equation. Uh, let me just write it here. The capacitor equation tells us that Q is equal to C times V, right? So V1 then will be equal to Q over C1 plus V2 will be equal to the charge on the second capacitor divided by its capacitance, which is going to be Q over C2 plus the voltage across C3 is going to be equal to charge on it, which is Q divided by C3. Apparently, this is equal to, now this V. Now, if you pay attention to our equivalent circuit here, V will be basically equal to the voltage across our equivalent capacitor. So, I guess we can express it as then the charge on our equivalent capacitor, which is Q divided by our equivalent capacitance, C equivalent, which is going to tell us, now you have one common factor, which is the charges on these capacitors. So we can cancel them out. This will give us one over C equivalent is equal to one over C1 plus one over C2 plus one over C3. This is how you can determine the equivalent capacitance of a circuit which consists of three capacitors in series. If you had more than three, then you're going to have to keep going one over C4 plus one over C5 plus up to however many capacitors that you have. Or if you had just two, then you don't have to worry about this and it's just going to be one over C1 plus one over C2. Okay, so we got our equivalent capacitance when capacitors are connected in series. So what did we learn from here? They are going to have the same charge on them. They will share the voltage of the battery. And apparently they are going to share this voltage according to their capacitances. You can look at here to determine how they do so. Maybe I can ask you a question here. Which one do you think will have the largest voltage across it? Do you think it will be the one that has the highest capacitance or that will be the one that has the lowest capacitance? Now, if you look at here, V1 is equal to Q over C1, V2 is equal to Q over C2, V3 is equal to Q over C3. So you divide the common factor by their capacitances. This is basically telling you that the one which has the lowest capacitance will have the largest voltage across its plates. Okay, so we are done with the capacitors in series. Let's have a look at what happens when you have capacitors that are connected in parallel. What we have here is three capacitors with capacitances C1, C2 and C3 connected in parallel to each other and the battery as shown uh, in the circuit. Again, our goal is to simplify this into a very simple circuit with a single capacitor and a battery. The equivalent capacitance of these three capacitors, we are going to call it C equivalent and this is what we are after again. How we can find it? Well. What we have to do is we are going to have to consider what happens when these three capacitors are connected to this battery. Now, initially they had no charge, which means that the plates of these capacitors will be at a different potential 
than the terminals of the battery so there will be a charge transfer between these plates and the battery the plates on this side will be positively charged whereas the plates on this side will be negatively charged and this charge transfer will continue until the plates and the terminals are at the same potential what this is telling us is that the positive terminal of the battery will be at the same potential as the positively charged plates and the negative terminal of this battery will be at the same potential as the negatively charged plates here so the potential difference or the voltage across each capacitor will be basically the voltage of the battery so when they are connected in parallel apparently they are going to have the same voltage across their plates well what about the charges let's remember the capacitor equation which says q is equal to c times v since all these capacitors are at the same voltage but having different capacitances means that they're going to have different charges let's call the charge on the capacitor c1 q1 so on this plate we will have q1 and minus q1 here q2 minus q2 here and q3 and minus q3 here okay now let's move to our uh, simplified circuit here now again this side of the equivalent capacitor will be positively charged and this side will be negatively charged but what about the charges here q and minus q are they gonna be equal to one of these guys or something else so to understand the relationship between the charge on the equivalent capacitor and the charges on these individual capacitors all we have to look into is the conservation of charge now if you have some charge leaving here some of them will choose to go this way some of them will choose to go this way and some of them will choose to go this way but the total number of charges leaving here are still the same so that will be equal to q here by the way i know it is the electrons that move but for the sake of simplicity let's say it is the positive charges that are moving so we have positive charges going from here and being basically separated into three different capacitors so what i'm saying is the total charge leaving the battery is equal to the individual charges accumulated on the capacitors now I know that Q is equal to nothing but if I were to use the capacitor equation C equivalent times V so I will have C equivalent times V is equal to and Q1 will be equal to C1 times voltage across that C1 times V plus uh, Q2 is C2 times V plus q3 which is c3 times v and as you can see v is common in all terms so we can cancel these guys out so we will find the equivalent capacitance to be c1 plus c2 plus c3 apparently when you have three capacitors connected in parallel to each other the equivalent capacitance is basically sum of the capacitances to summarize when the capacitors are connected in parallel they will have the same voltage on them but they're going to share the total charge and they're going to share this total charge according to their capacitances again uh, which one will have the largest share of this charge well in this case q1 is equal to c1 times v q2 is equal to c2 times v you see the the common factor here is the v so whichever has the largest capacitance will have the largest charge and whichever has the smallest capacitance will have the smallest charge all right now you know how to handle capacitors in series and in parallel in the upcoming video we are going to solve a couple of examples related to these capacitors that are connected in parallel series or maybe a combination of them and then we will move on from there i will see you guys in the next video